over and over again, what I have seen in the healing process is that it's the trajectory that matters more than how far along you are in the trajectory. The moment somebody starts taking responsibility for their needs, saying, I have needs, I'm not waiting around, I'm in the process of figuring out how to farm what I need and turn my life into a centered ecology, things start to shift. It's like, it's, it seems as though it's like 90% of the healing begins when you begin because we're talking about an energetic. And it's not the, this is what I mean to say, it's not the accomplishment of a fully ecological lifestyle that is so healing. It's the dedicated attempt with total sincerity. That's amazing. That, that's, that gives your body work. I, have noticed that, thank goodness, having a perfect life is not a requirement for healing. I'm so glad. <laughs> okay? It just isn't. Living, living a path with heart, living a vibration that heals allows us to be in very imperfect situations, including currently not getting what we need. To go into, to be in a situation where I am not getting what I need, and going into collapse, or despair, or hungry ghosthood, binging on whatever, the, you know, the fact that I'm not getting what I need right now, if I'm not, if, if I'm going into hungry ghosthood and eating a lot of ice cream, this is a problem. If I'm not getting what I need right now, but I am not losing heart about this, and I'm saying, all right, it's lean times right now. True enough. How do I plant what I need? How do I create? What do I, and I go into that cognitive state of musing and considering and thinking about how do I create a centered ecology around meeting my needs. So much changes already in the body. Thank goodness our job is not to solve anybody's problems at all. And thank goodness people don't have to have their problems solved in order to get well. What our medicine is about is helping people in the face of what it is that they have to deal with thrive. How to take the circumstances as opportunity to discover what's inside of me so that everything becomes food, so that every experience becomes food. How can this nourish my proper nature? What kind of digestive system is it going to take to turn this into food for me? Because the thing about food and the thing about life and the thing about experiences is it's not for nothing the stomach meridian and the kidney meridian are right next to each other. They're on the front of the body there. Because even if all of us had the exact same thing for lunch, even if we had the exact same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, for a couple of decades. You think we'd all become the same? We have different proper nature. And so the exact same food, we take it and we turn it into us. This is the difference between food and herbs. When we eat food, we win. When we eat herbs, they win. <laughs> That's the definition. It's like in 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 like we are the pitch pipe for the food. We eat the food, we bring it in, and we go, mm -hmm, and we transmute it into our note. It come, I mean, man, like you eat stuff and your hair comes out like that. <laughs> That's amazing. I wish I could do that. It's so cool. If I eat and it comes out a different way. <laughs> because inside you have something that goes, mm -hmm, note of this hair is hummed into the food and it turns into that. Wow, you win. <laughs> Whereas the herbs come
come in and they say to us, mmm, and we say, oh yeah, right. I got it. And we pick up on their note. Am I making sense here? So this is an important aspect of earth and living and what we're doing as healers is helping people to take their life circumstances and be nourished by them. How do I get out of this what I need? Or not getting what I need at the moment, how do I fast if I need to? And come back with a farmer's heart to work with what I have here. And that attitude alone makes a huge difference in someone's physiology.